What's up, everybody? Good evening. Good evening, good evening. I hope you are doing well. Welcome. I hope you're having a great conclusion of your weekend and the beginning of your work week. This is Gregory Bloomfield. How you doing? We are live here on Instagram, and we are uh, doing motivation moments with me, Gregory Bloomfield. Instagraph, Instagram PG, how are you? Yes, good. Come in the room. We'll take a couple minutes to come in the room. I'm really excited and privileged to uh, have this guest on the show today. Um, for those of you who love praise and worship, for those of you who are, hey, Pastor Paul Graham, how are you? Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm so honored, man, I got for you to be here. Um, yes. Hi, hey, Teresa, how are you? Yeah, for those of you who love worship music, those of you who love praise and worship, you're really going to enjoy this episode of Motivation Moments because today we have a special guest. Her name is Hannah Love out of New York, and she is a praise and worship leader. And she is continuing with the theme that we have for this month of being thankful. Um, she's going to show us how she's thankful through praise and worship. And um, please invite other people to join in this room, to join in the conversation, and to just have fun with us today on a Sunday night as we prepare you for whatever you got to do this week. Um, one, A lot of people have said that Sunday nights are the most depressing times of the week. Well, I'm here to change that, to give you some inspiration, motivation, and encouragement to help you with whatever you may be going through this week, whether it's a huge challenge at work, whether it's raising the kids, raising the family, your marriage, your money, whatever it is. My role today, my assignment to the body of Christ is to encourage you and to inspire you with words from the word of God and from guests coming in, telling them their, telling you their motivation and their um, their experiences. Good evening, Angela. Good to see you. Good evening, Erica. How are you? So this is growing and I'm very thankful that it's growing because we're getting people from all over the country. If you could just type in the chat what state and or what country you're in, what state or what country you're in. Um, so far, I think I just have pure Americans on there, which is wonderful. But um, we also have, oh, thank you. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Angela, for your kind words. So we got um, Pastor Paul Graham, who is in Maryland. We got Erica, who's in South Carolina. I'm in Massachusetts right now, but sometimes I'm in Illinois. And we got Virginia. And we also have, right now, we have Miss Hannah Love, and we have Little Rock, Arkansas, in the house. So this is awesome. Thank you all for tuning in. Well, our guest is here, so I am going to pull her up. Now, I am going to thank you so much for your support and your encouragement um, throughout this ministry as it's blossoming and taking off. Yes. So we have Hannah Love in the building. Can you hear me? I oh, can. Can you hear me? Let's flip the camera. Yes, I can hear you. Hey. If the phone would do what the phone is supposed to do and not rotate. Okay. Is that good? Hey, that is wonderful. Hey, Everybody, Kathy. meet Miss Hannah Love. Hey, Arlene, how are you? Miss Hannah Love. Now, I'm going to just let the kid out the bag right off the top before I introduce you. If you look very carefully at Hannah, you will see a resemblance. <laughs> <laughs> this is my little cousin, y'all. She's my cousin. Pastor Graham's on here. So Pastor Graham is Paul Graham's on here. So I don't know if he knew that we were related. So you know what? That's a little kept secret. Yes, this is my young cousin. cousin. 
This is my cousin. I can show you the family tree. Mm -hmm. Look at how we smile. Yes, this is my cousin. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is um, Hannah. She is a worship leader. She is a vocal coach. She is an entrepreneur. She own, yeah, she gave me notes, but I, I want to switch it up and say, yes, she is beautiful. Amen. Oh, thank you, Erica. Hi, guys. <laughs> she got the beautiful side of the family. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> owns her own music company called Love More Music, LLC. And I'm very happy to announce that Hannah is a author. Yay. She has her first book, and I know there'll be many more, a book called mm -hmm. Worship 101. Can you show a copy of the book, please? It's Worship. an e-book, so I'll, it's, it's on e my, um, it's an e-book, it's on my timeline, so okay. I'll send you the picture so that you can um, share it out with your, uh, with your tribe. And this book is an e-book, as she said, and if, for all of you that are worship leaders or praise of worship leaders or love praise of worship, I know that you're going to join this book because it's going to show you how to enhance your worship experiences. And it also will give you the who, the why, the how in terms of praise and worship. And I thought of no other better person to be one of our speakers than my own family, um, Hannah Love. And she is going to teach us how gratefulness and thankfulness ties into worship. So yes, please, uh, without further ado, my little, uh, listen, let me tell you something else about Hannah. She loves God. She, lo <laughs> she loves God. What's wrong with you? She loves God, for real. You can tell in the way she talks, the way she, she has an aura about her that loves God. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to none other than Miss Hannah of all the way from New York. Take it away. All right. Hi, guys. So as uh, Greg beautifully um, and skillfully introduced me, I am a worship leader. I am a vocal coach. Um, I'm also a worship coach. So I essentially teach people how to worship, what worship looks like, what is expected of us as believers when we are actively and intentionally engaging in worship. Um, I also make sure that you sound like something that makes sense uh, because it is disastrous and dangerous to get up on somebody's good up hoity-toity stage and sound like hot garbage or dying cats in a sewer, right? Uh, so if we are making a joyful noise, the noise must be in key on a piano that I can find, right? So this is... Uh, as believers, what worship leaders, what worshipers are supposed to do, right? So I teach um, congregants, I teach churches what worship looks like and how to worship. Um, so that's what birthed my first book. Um, I'm also a vocal coach. Again, I make sure that we sound like something that makes sense. And because the theme of this month, month is giving thanks, we are going to talk a lot about thankfulness, in terms of worship, right? So Father, as we have this discussion, as we dialogue for a bit, I ask that you come in, I ask that you give me the grace and the wisdom to clearly and effectively express uh, your sentiments and your hearts. Allow those that are uh, listening to be blessed and be ministered to. Give me the right words to say. Give me the right analogies and imageries to use. And at the end of the day, we pray for uh, wisdom and increased desire to worship and give thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So the definition of thankful um, is expressing, and if you see me looking off, it's because I'm a teacher by nature, so I have my notes. <laughs> Um, the definition of giving think of, of thankful is expressing gratitude and relief, right? There are different ways that we give thanks, not love. There are different ways that we give thanks. If someone does a good thing for us or a kind thing for us or goes out of their way to do something and we appreciate what they do, we're going to do a few things. We're going to audibly say thank you. Um, we may return the favor. There's an old phrase that you oftentimes see um, Southerners use. If you borrow a pot from someone, you return it full. 
right? So I'm thanking you for the pot that you loaned me by bringing you a dish of food. Never return a pie crust tin empty, right? So if you do something for me, I'm going to either say thank you or my actions are going to reflect gratitude, right? So either I'm going to... Uh, my coworkers and I, we do this thing where we buy food for each other all the time. If I'm going to the store, hey, I'm going to the store. What do you need? Uh, I need a bottle of water. Cool. They'll get me a bottle of water. But then if they're going out and I say, oh, can you do me a favor and buy me a lemon? They're going to buy me a lemon. At no point in time are we ever exchanging funds, right? That's just the culture and the nature of being in close spaces with people. Um, it could be something as simple as, all right, um, Hannah... Uh, I know Hannah's an intercessor and I know that when she talks to God, God listens. Hey, I'm about to walk into an, a very important meeting. Can you pray? There, that is my way of thanking them for, I don't know, buying me breakfast earlier in the day, right? There is this organic exchange of actions that are done. So when someone does something for me and I am thanking them for it, I'm either going to say thank you or my actions are going to reflect gratitude, right? We oftentimes nitpick or get offended or get hurt when someone does something for us or when we do something for someone and their actions show that they are displeased with this, what does it look like? Someone cook, you cook someone your favorite dish, right? We're talking about Thanksgiving and a lot of officers are going to be doing this potluck thing where everybody brings a dish. And if yeah. you look like us, <laughs> who made that? <laughs> do they have cats at home? <laughs> She don't like to wash her hands. I'm not going to eat what she cooked, right? So now we're doing these office potluck things, right? Um, so it's very common to see people try a little bit of everything. You would be offended if you brought a dish that was so important to you, right? It's a family recipe um, to you. This dish is associated with warmth, love, memories. But now you're sharing this intimate thing with your coworkers. Oh, this is nasty. I don't like it. It's disgusting. Who made this? You immediately feel hurt and insulted because they are rejecting this kind thing that you're doing, right? So we're showing gratitude by accepting the thing that someone has done, but we could also cause harm by rejecting it. I grew up making ice cream from scratch, right? My dad, before he passed, would buy all the ingredients and we would make ice cream together. Now, homemade ice cream tastes nothing like store-bought ice cream. However, it wasn't the taste that I was looking for. It was spending time with my dad doing a shared activity. Now, I can introduce this to my children when I have them. Yo, mom is corny. Why does she always want to make ice cream? We can go to the store. I'm going to feel hurt. I'm going to feel a way because I'm sharing something with you. And because you don't like it, because you don't understand it, you're rejecting it. Newsflash, you don't have to understand something to accept something. Your job is just to accept it. If it's coming from the heart and it's heartfelt and it's a good thing and it's a kind thing, you don't need to understand why I'm making ice cream from scratch. Just take a bite and going about your business, right? So as humans, gratitude and thankfulness is important because it's how we bond with one another. It's how relationships grow stronger. It's how we see a more human side or a more intentional side of people, right? It's how we see a person as a human and less of a villain. So what does this have to do with God, right? When it comes to giving thanks, we are thanking God for what he does, right? He woke me up. I'm in my right mind. I'm clothed. There's food in my pantry. <clears throat> I have a job or I have stable income. Um, I have a village. I have a tribe. If my parents are still alive, I have parents that are living. Um, he makes promises and then he keeps them. I'm in good health. Um, I'm confident. I am sure I'm his child. These yeah. are things that he does for me. Now, how do I respond to the things that God does? I can audibly say thank you, right? So this looks like, uh, Lord, I really need a job. My finances are tight and I really, really, really need a job. Cool. Um, he gives you with a job. Lord, I thank you. You're, you're audibly acknowledging what God did and then redirecting your attentions and thoughts to the person who did it. 
Yes. Then there is your actions. Lord, you gave me a job. I thank you. Now, this is how you know I'm thankful. I am going to get to work on time. Mm. I'm going to be integral at work. I'm going to complete my tasks on time. I'm going to complete them efficiently. I'm not going to steal from the people that job. I am not going to keep my workplace nasty. I'm not going to engage in workplace gossip. Now my actions are going to reflect that I am genuinely thankful for what he did. Because if I don't show up to work on time, if I am presenting as insubordinate, if I am um, not uh, completing my work tasks, I will get fired, right? Now I'm fired. I have no job. I can't blame God. He didn't take the job away. I just didn't do what I was supposed to do to maintain this position, right? Yeah. That's just how that works. So we can thank God with for the things that he does for us with our words. Or, And this isn't just limited to us. I'm making it personal, but essentially we can thank God for what he does for others. So my cousin wrote a book. I was so excited that he wrote a book that I told all my little friends. <laughs> my cousin wrote a book by the book. Um, I purchased a copy of the book, right? But I am thankful and I'm excited on behalf of him. Even if he forgot to say thank you, I'm going to say thank you, right? So uh, 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 I'm thanking you with my words. I'm thanking with my actions. But as believers, there's another layer of thanks, thankfulness that we're to give, and that's called our worship. This is how we show up and respond, whether in our intimate moments with God or in our corporate moments with God, right? So in the intimate moments with God, it could be, I don't have time to like go into full on prayer and thank you because I have to make an immediate move. But when I get home with my journal and my Bible and my worship music, I'm going to pour my heart out before the Lord and thank him. And now, all right, Lord, now that you've put me in this, in this position, give me strategy, give me wisdom, increase my discernment. That's my intimate one-on-one -on -one time with the father, right? Corporately. And we see this in a lot of charismatic churches. And for those that don't know, your, your churches typically fall in two categories. They're either conservative or they're charismatic. Your conservatives, they're very quiet or they're you know, on the quieter side. There's very structured order in the service. It's very first you do this, then we do this, then we do this. You're not going to see much of the gifts. And if the, you do see them, they're very limited and contained. Whereas for in charismatic services, the Holy Spirit kind of has his way to do as he pleases and the believers bend to the Holy Spirit moving in services, right? Why is this important? In charismatic spaces, we can have someone come to the front and say, last week I was blind, so-and-so prayed for me, my eyes opened, and now I can see. The congregation is thankful that God opened their eyes and together we are worshiping with the healed person for what God has done. Amen. Does that make sense? Uh, we are engaging in corporate worship and thanking God for when he does something for someone else, whether we benefit from it or not. Now the church family as a unit has come together and we have paused on what we're going to God for. We have paused on what we see happening around us. We're paused on uh, what we're experiencing and what we're feeling. And we are collectively redirecting our attention, our energies, and our focus on God for doing something for one person. What is the result of this? It builds up our faith because God did a thing and I'm thanking him for what he's done. Mm. I'm going to expect him to do more so that I can thank him for more so that he can do more so that I can expect him to do more. That's where this beautiful cycle comes in. Now my walk and my relationship with God isn't contingent on what he does. I'm going to love God just because of who he is, but my faith, in him is built when I see him do things because I'm human. I need to see something done for me to believe it, right? Or at least most humans are like that. I'm, I'm a little weird. I'm a little different. Majority of humans, I need to see you do the thing before I can actually commit to it 100%, right? So as believers, uh, 
we are thankful by expressing gratitude. We are thankful in our words. We're thankful in our actions, but we're also thankful in our worship. Psalm tells us to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. So I am entering into the courts where I am going to meet the father with gratitude, Amen. not contention, not anger, not hurt. And this doesn't mean that you don't have these emotions. Yes, you have emotions. Emote by all means, but your emotion should not hinder you from acknowledging something God has done and then thanking him for it. Hey. I can be big mad at God. That doesn't mean that he didn't wake me up this morning. I can be big mad at God. That doesn't mean that I'm not in my right mind. I can be big mad at God. That doesn't mean I don't have the ability to hear from him. I can be big mad at God, but I'm still going to enter into his courts, thankful that I have the ability to do so freely, especially when we live in a climate in a world where I in the States have the freedom to go to God in a corporate setting and not look over my shoulder and expect a gunman to follow me and blow up the whole congregation. That's a privilege that I have that other people don't have. Amen. True. You try going into Suriname or any of the Muslim nations, I believe Suriname is a Muslim nation, or any of the Muslim nations and think that you might not risk your life for corporately worshiping and you will take worship in the States completely different. Mm -hmm. So Psalms tells us to enter into his temple with a heart of gratitude. Essentially, I am walking into the place where I am going to meet God, expecting to thank God for what he has done with me for me, with my lips, with my actions, and with my worship. Yes. Right? Yes. The New Testament confirms this, and this was, I believe, in Luke. Luke. The 10 lepers. Christ healed 10. That's Luke. It is Luke. Christ heals 10. Only one came back to say thank you. Mm. Now, what happens, and I do believe that this is something that applies to all believers, God doing something for you and you not saying thank you, cool, whatever, he'll get over it. But when you say thank you, mm. there is an extra blessing that you get with it. Yes. If yeah. you look at what happened in Luke, he healed all 10, all 10 went away, they were healed. But the one that came back was made whole. Yes. There is a beauty in coming back to say thank you and its fruit is wholeness. You just completed the circle. God did the thing. You thank him for the thing. He makes you whole. Mm. As opposed to God does the thing and you walked away. Something is kind of left hanging. You want to close it up. Go back and say thank you. So if you take away nothing, if you remember nothing, as believers were to express gratitude, as believers, we are to, just like how we do in the natural, thank others for what they do for us and not necessarily expect gratitude, but certainly thank others for what they do for us. We do the same. We do more for God, right? We thank God for what he has done with us with our words. We yeah. thank God for what he has done with us with our actions. We thank God for what he has done with us for us with our worship we thank god for what he has done for us in intimate settings in corporate settings our lifestyle should reflect gratitude because if it doesn't the unsaved person out there is not going to want to become a believer if we look sour all the time mm. If we look miserable all the time, if we're angry all the time, if we're complaining all the time, he is not, the unbeliever is not going to want to come and serve the God that we serve. Because no, if serving him makes you look like that, this doesn't belong to me. Christianity doesn't belong to me. God does not belong to me. In that moment, you've taken his name in vain. You're assuming the name and the character of a person, but you're not embodying the essence of who he is. You're a walking contradiction. What is the point? What's the reason? How can we as believers be walking contradictions and then still expect unsaved people to come to us? You're miserable and you're nasty. You don't know how to say thank you. You don't have a kind word, but the same God that you want me to serve 
He's a God of love. He's thankful and you're miserable. One plus one is not equaling two. No, thank you. Your God doesn't belong to me. So being thankful is more than just a heart posture. Being thankful is more than just an act of worship. Being thankful is more than just the fruit of your lips and your actions. Being thankful is an evangelistic tool. Amen. Mic drop. Hey, listen, if you enjoy that word, please send hearts and show a sign that you enjoy that word. I want to just thank Hannah for all that. And I also want to extend on what she said because she preached on, she preached on something that I touched on as well, is that nine people, I, I always say this, Jesus is a really good accountant because he remembers the people he blessed and didn't say thank you. That's why there's a special blessing on being thankful. Those texts mm -hmm. that he went away whole, that one leper. Everybody got healed, but one got whole. Wholeness means nothing broken, nothing worrying that you're worrying about. Everything is fine because Jesus <laughs> is good, right? I want, uh, Hannah, if you could put the website to get your ebook, please. And we can sure. pick it. So, I want you to remember that worship is a lifestyle. And what I also heard my beautiful cousin say is, worship is a witness. Worship in your workplace. Even if things are going crazy, still have a song in your heart and a worship on your tongue. Because guess what? That worship can destroy the yoke, not just for you. But everyone in your job can get free because of your dedication to God and to inspire and to motivate other people. So, yes, your worship is the key. So I don't know what you're going through today, but when you get to that job on Monday, say thank you for this job. Thank you for that coworker. I want to see how we can pin that in there. So Hannah put the, um, the information to get her ebook in the chat. Let me see how I can pin this. Oh, pin comment. Yes. I'm getting better at this. Oh. So I pin the link. Y'all take a screenshot. You all link it. Y'all get the book. Get the book. Get the book. Get the book. It'll bless your life. And also connect with Hannah on social media. And, you know, if you have any questions about worship or if you have a praise team that needs some help or if you want to start a praise team or a worship group in your church, this is the person that can help you. She is willing to travel, y'all. She just doesn't want to be a blessing to the five boroughs. She wants to be a blessing internationally. Hello. So please, <laughs> so please uh, I encourage you. I've seen her work. I'm not just saying this because she's my cousin. I'm saying she's good. She's real good. So oh, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. So please. And I encourage you. And this is why I want to do this platform is to, a lot of people know the T.D. Jakes and the Noel Jones, but there are a lot of people in local churches that are looking for a platform and they're looking for just an outlet to share their gifts and talents. Mm -hmm. So you have been very grateful and it's humbling that you guys support me in this. So I want to share the wealth and share the experience with other people that I know are, is a blessing to the body of Christ. So yes, please connect with Hannah. Her link is below. Purchase her ebook. It will be a blessing. Connect with her on Instagram and you can, you know, she, she'll write you back too. And, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and you, you know, you write some of these people, it's like, you got to get there armor bear or their over bear or whatever bear you know I don't, I don't have any bears uh, I have no bears. Me. <laughs> I have no bears too. I must it's have me. Them it's me. Th there's no bears. There's there isn't a team of people. I'm not there yet where I need a team of people to handle my request. I'm not exactly. there yet. I'm 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 enjoying my humble beginnings. So if you exactly. message me I will be messaging you back, not a representative. <laughs> I have someone to help me with flyers and a couple other technical things, but this is yeah, we just doing, you know, small beginnings. But you know what? Thank you so much for um, the support, y'all. And thank you so much for um, listening to my cousin and, and supporting her with her ministry as a worship leader. Once again, 
Look at the link below, copy it, and learn more about her. Connect with her on social media, and I know that you will be blessed, all right? And also, please, if this uh, platform has been a blessing to you, and, you know, as I continue to invite other speakers, please you know, prayerfully consider if uh, you see my cash app at uh, Bloomfield Ting, if you want to drop a seed, please feel free. Whether it's a dollar, five dollars, fifty dollars, whatever it is. So, yes, get this information, support these ministries. It will be a blessing for each and every one of you. So our time is up, but I wanted to say thank you, cousin, for being on the show. And I know that you'll be back on here again. Because, um, yeah, you'll be back on here again. So uh, be ready. <laughs> I know you'll be ready. All right, mm -hmm. y'all. So thank you so much. It's 9 o'clock, so I want to um, conclude with a prayer, and then we'll be on our way. Fa Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless your name. We thank you for this wonderful time where we learned about the importance of worship and praise. We pray for Hannah in a special way with her ministry. Bless her and her family and every her church and everyone that's important to her. And may this book succeed. May it touch nations, Lord God, and may it touch the world. And may she be able to spread the gospel and teach people what it is to have authentic worship and to pour it out of these individuals that want to learn more about you and serve you and sing and 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 learn more about you and show the world effectively that Jesus is Lord. We thank you in the name of Jesus. May everyone say amen. 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 Thank you. Good night, everyone, and have a wonderful week in the kingdom. God bless you. Take God care. bless you. Bye. Bye.